On the eastern shore of New Zealand's South Island, in the North Otago region, there lies the town of Omaru. With population only slightly over 14,000 people, Omaru, nevertheless, is the home to one of the most prominent and prolific art communities in New Zealand that brings together artists working in the same style, steampunk. The League of Victorian Imagineers pioneered the steampunk movement in Omaru, and several other groups joined in later including Steampunk Headquarters, The Liberatory, and the Maori artists at Taylor Made Omaru. Together, they gave their hometown a new name, the Steampunk Capital of the World. It's a movement that's been been around for for a while, but when a group of people sort of like, you know, come together, mm -hmm. and it sort of evolves, um, and it takes on a life of its own. And there's some really good uh, players in this town who uh, create the stuff and support it. Um, a couple of people who put a bit of money behind it, and mm -hmm. um, you know, when you got groups like this and the exhibiting in the Forest Gallery, um, Steampunk HQ with another group of people, um, the fashion show, the uh, um, the life of its own that it's created, and the interest from worldwide people into the same movement. Um, you know, we get we get what we get, and uh, you know, we're all part of it together. What struck me is very unique when I visited Omaru is how prominent steampunk was in the community, becoming one of the main Omaru's attractions. Omaru itself, with its Victorian white limestone buildings, provides the perfect backdrop for the steampunk scene. Steampunk street art is everywhere. There is a permanent steampunk headquarters gallery and local businesses that embrace the Victorian culture, such as Annie's Tea Room, complete the picture. When I first met with the League of Victorian Imagineers in November 2011, they were in the process of creating the Steampunk Trail, a map of Amaru highlighting the steampunk art and attractions around the town. The maps will be distributed in visitor information centers throughout New Zealand, inviting more tourists to visit and admire Steampunk Amaru. Shortly, there will be a Google tour too. This team effort is only a small part of what the league does to put Steampunk Omaru on the world map. Since 2009, an annual art show at the Grand Forester Gallery attracts more than 10,000 visitors each year. It might be the biggest showcase of steampunk art in the world, exhibiting artists from all parts of New Zealand and beyond. Uh, steampunk in Omaru was started about three years ago by Ian Clark and Sally Hope and myself, um, Sally organised a trip to uh, interview to Weta for us and uh, we went up there and saw them and they filled the gallery up with stuff and since then we've been filling up this marvellous gallery with stuff every year ever since and it's been more and more successful and it's one of Omaru's premier art events. <laughs>
The exhibition at the Forrester Gallery is not all that happens in Omaru steampunk community. Every June there is a fashion show held in the magnificent Victorian-era Omaru Opera House. Over the past few years, the show has evolved to become a three-day festival, and spectators come from both North and South Islands and as far as Australia to enjoy and to participate. Steampunk and Omaru is... What defines New Zealand's steampunk movement for me is the amazing attention to detail and to the backstory of each creation. For the artists I've met, steampunk is not just a fashion statement, it is truly science fiction, with emphasis on both science and fiction. Every gadget created is accompanied with a very detailed and sophisticated explanation of how it works. Every character has a unique place in the steampunk universe. Costume detail is not there just to create the look. Every single stitch is there for a reason. As I read the Gazette to catch up on the news, some classified adverts I chanced to peruse when I saw Nif Builubi gives a perfect example of the thorough thinking and attention to detail with one of his most recent inventions, the 20th century fossilizer time machine that was exhibited at the Forester in 2011. So this is a 20th century fossil, mm -hmm. which um, this machine that I built recovers them from an alternate timeline. Um, and uh, simply by pulling the lever, looking in the viewport, you see, see an empty plinth and then you pull it right down and it suddenly appears mm -hmm. using a Victorian magic called a Pepper's Ghost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, originally came up with this idea of fossilised 20th century pieces of technology from an alternate universe where they have something called mm -hmm. electronics. Very strange technology, mm -hmm. but it's, they've suffered some sort of catastrophic happening on the earth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this machine then recovers them yeah, no. from all the timeline. Were we able to ever figure out what this technology was for and how they used it? As you can see, you can, you can, it's in not very good shape since it's, um, each one of these is about 500 years old. Mm -hmm. So we probably will never find oh, out yes. what those Possibly are. Possibly not. I don't see any steam yes. technology yes. whatsoever in here. Amazing. Mm. Yes. But maybe we have scientists that can. help collaborate with those here. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> As I was leaving Omaru, I knew I had to share the story of this wonderful town and the people I met there with my friends back home. Share the excitement and inspiration I found in New Zealand. Well met, dear friends. Here's to many more returns. Steampunk makes people smile and it's the main thing, you know, that's what it's all about. 